Hey, hey, what's up, my friend? So here's the thing, right? When it comes to technical analysis, many traders, they are overwhelmed, frustrated, or even outright confused, right, as to how to go about using it correctly, the proper way. So what they do is that they focus on the best indicator settings for a particular market or a time frame. But what's the problem with that? The problem is, when market conditions change, which I guarantee you it will, everything falls apart. Do you agree? Smash the thumbs up button if you agree. So, what is the solution? Well, as you know by now, right, you don't want to waste time focusing on the best indicator settings because eventually those settings will fail when market conditions change. Instead, what you want to learn is proven technical analysis strategies, right, that holds up well, right, regardless of market conditions regardless of the different time frames that you're trading. And that's why in today's video, I'll share with you my five proven strategies, right? That will help make technical analysis work for you. The best part is this, you can apply these concepts and strategies across the Forex markets, the stock markets, or even the crypto markets. So specifically, right, here's what you'll discover today. Number one, how to identify high probability reversal areas. Number two, how to catch explosive moves in the market before it occurs. Number three, how to avoid false breakouts so you can avoid these unnecessary losses. Number four, how to spot high probability breakout trades where you can risk a dollar to potentially make $3 back or more. And number five, I will share with you the one thing that all winning traders have in common. Sounds good? Then let's get started. Okay, now the first thing that I want to share with you is to how to identify high probability reversal areas on the chart so you know which levels to pay attention to. Because if you look at this chart, this is the chart of uh, silver, you see that there is multiple area of value, multiple swing high, multiple resistance that you can trade up from. For example, you have this one over here, okay, where previous support, support, support could become resistance. You have this one, this swing high over here, you have this area of resistance over here, and this extreme one over here. So if you look at this chart itself, you have three or rather four options to trade from. But which is the one that you should be focusing on? Well, this, this brings me to a concept, right, of what uh, we traders tend to call confluence. This is a concept which I learned from Nell Fuller, one of the pioneers of uh, price action trading. So he used the term confluence. So confluence pretty much means, right, multiple factors coming together that signal, hey, you know, this area could possibly reverse from. So for example, one confluence is, as you know, area of resistance, like this one over here, you have area of support, which could become resistance. What other confluence can we look at? So another one that I want to introduce you is called the quarterly open. This is a concept which I learned from trader assets. So there are many traders that have come before me around my time which share concepts which I learned and I'm grateful for. So the quarterly open is something like this. So if you look at the chart right now, you can see that you have this multiple dotted lines over here, here, here. What exactly is this? So this refers to the quarterly open. So as you know, right, uh, every quarter is three months. Yeah, so what do you think? Is it three or four months? It's three months. So the quarter opens on January, April, July, and October. So the first trading day of this month, the first trading day, the opening price, that is the quarterly open. So as you can see, right, D market by this, uh, possibly this level over here, this is the first trading day, the opening price for October. Then this one over here is the first trading day, opening price of July. So you get what I mean, right? So you can see that this level can project ahead of time, right? And it could act as possible support and resistance on your chart. So if, where do you find this indicator? You're probably wondering. So just go to indicators, search for quarter open, okay? And look for this one guy here called Copacelli, right? So I've been using this indicator for quite a while now, so I know it's from this guy. Okay, and it looks something like what you see on my chart. So I just go to the settings, you can see, there we have it, I have the, I have the show the quarter open listed over here in the style if you wanna see it's like this, okay? So just click okay, and you have something that looks like this. So now, you have multiple factors, right? Number one, you have this, a uh, this, uh, let me just find a tool, rectangle tool, okay? You have this previous support, which could become resistance. Next, you have this quarterly open, right? Demarket by this dotted line over here. And, and why is this quarterly open? Is because if you look back at this price section of this chart, the quarterly open, right? This market seems to be respecting it, you know, quite a bit. So if you look back, back in uh, July, you can see over here, this quarterly open, price hit down lower, then bounce up higher, came back down to retest this quarterly open, hit up higher, 
came back down to retest the quarterly open and hit up back higher once again. Same for, let's say, back in April, right? This is the quarterly open. Price hit up higher, pull back, hit up higher, smash through the quarterly open, retest it, right? and hit down once again. So you can see that the quarterly open, right? It's a area, it's a level that this market tends to respect. And plus, overlay with this previous support which could become resistance this to me it's a high probability area where i want to look for potential selling opportunities so now the question is you know when exactly do you sell okay so i'm just gonna ju let me just remove this box over here to make it less cluttered and maybe also remove the uh, quarterly open right since you know that this is an area of confluence so what i'm looking for is again pretty straightforward there are two ways this could play out right or at least according to my own trading rules number one the price could go up higher and then make a sudden reversal closing back below this area of resistance right maybe forming something like a bearish engulfing pattern then i look to go short stops the distance above the highs possible target just before this recent swing move thereby capturing this one swing down lower don't worry later i'll show you where exactly to set your stop loss where to set target so you are clear and objective about it but for now just understand this this concept of this particular setup i'm looking for Alternatively, right, if you don't want to trade off the daily time frame, maybe you want to trade off a smaller time frame to get a better risk to reward on the trade. This is where you can go down to a lower time frame, like the four-hour time frame, to again look for potential trading opportunities. So in this case, right, what I'm looking for, okay, is over here. Right, this is the uh, area of value with the confluence which I mentioned earlier. Looking for the price again to hit up higher, come back down lower, make another step higher, taking out this highs, right, and then get rejected once again on this four-hour time frame. So this could look something like a shooting star pattern like this. Okay, so when this happens again, right, I will look to go short on the next candle open. But to be honest, usually I'm a cheap skip. I like to have a sell limit in order to get in at a slightly better price. Yeah, again, stops the distance above the highs. And in terms of targets this time around, I have two options. Number one, my first target could be just before this recent swing low, and a secondary target further away at this area of support over here. So you can see in this case, I have two potential targets, T1 and T2. Okay, and this time around, since you're entering on the four hour time frame, your stop loss will be tighter, which allows you a more favorable risk to reward on the trade. Okay, so earlier we spoke about the quarterly openness and as a confluence factor, but guess what? That is not the only way to find multiple confluences on the chart. So in this example, again, I'm going to teach you another confluence that you probably would have not heard of. So again, once you look at this chart, you can see that Aussie against the dollar recently, right, has broke below this uh, area of a support, right? Support, that's the once, twice, three, four, five, six, then recently break down. So that's one possible area of value to look for selling opportunities. This is another one. And then with this other one over here. So you have three, right? All three are fine, but which is the one that sticks out? The one that you should pay attention to? The one that, if possible, you want to look for trading opportunities, right? Opportunities. Okay, so let me share with you, right? So in this case, again, you can look for confluence factor. And for this example, I want to teach you something called the yearly open. Okay, so the yearly open looks like this. So you can see over here, this is the yearly open. And what is the yearly open? Similar concept as the quarterly open, just at the first trading day of the year, the opening price, that is the yearly open. And as you can see over here, on the 2nd of January, which is the first trading day of 2023, the yearly open has been projected all the way, right, till the end of 2023, December, last trading day. And notice how this market seems to be respecting this, this uh, yearly open, right? Tested once, twice, three times right now we're currently, currently trading near this lows over here so if we can come back here for a fourth time again this area is significant because not only is it at the yearly open it's also at this area of resistance which i hope by now you can see right the price has tested multiple times at this yearly open which now has formed resistance so that is where i want to look for selling opportunities so among all these levels on the chart that is the most attractive one to me that is the one which i would say has a has a higher probability of reversal, right? So let's see what happens next. So this is a replay mode. I'm going to walk you through uh, bar by bar. All right, so as you can see, this market then starts to, you know, head down lower, collapsing. Or rather, try to break down lower, but, you know, didn't follow through. Then I just go fast forward a little bit, right? You can see over here, this previous support, right, which could become resistant, this market didn't really respect this level as it just kind of, like, you know, bust through higher, okay? And then started heading now back. As At this price point, this is where I am... Um, Starting to be alert, like, what's going on, man? Yeah, starting to pay attention to the level because the price is already near that area of value that I'm interested in. So at a, at a point, you can, you know, set price alert, you know, set whatever uh, bookmark symbol, whatever that you're comfortable with so that when the price comes to that level, you want to see if there's a valid entry trigger to take a short position. Okay, so let's see. Price goes up higher, right? The closing higher for the day. Right? And this long wick uh, sticking out. So for me, personally, what I would like to see is for the price to bust.
bust through that level, break out of the level, right? So where the buyers step in, trying to push the price higher, let's go, let's go, let's go. And then suddenly have their homes, their dreams get crushed down by strong selling pressure where the price closed back below this area of resistance. So at this point, right, you can see that the price tried to break out higher. It tells me that there are traders wanting to see the price goes up higher, but the selling pressure is so overwhelming, right, that they, you know, the, the price couldn't close up above resistance. Instead, right, it reverse and immediately collapse down lower, back below resistance, otherwise known as a false breakout, a false break. Okay, that's what I like to see. In this case, yep, you can see the price again try to break out of resistance, but not quite there yet. Boom, right? On this candle, right, strong close above resistance. So usually right, when this happens, I'm, I'm very wary. I don't like to just buy after a very strong, big bullish candle out of resistance because from the looks of it, right, the price has moved too fast, too soon, right? Move from this low without any break, just Boom, right? Like a car accelerated 0 to 100, zoom, just, just like that. So usually in the markets, when I see this type of price action, I want to be alert, right? Would the reversal be coming, right? Or is this going to be a, a real sustained move? Because if it's a real sustained move, I want to see the pullback, you know, getting weak, small series of candles looking like a bull flag, and then break out higher, and then that's where the move can, you know, sustain up higher. So let's see what happens. So in this case, price starts to stall. Stall again on second candle, okay? So this could be a potential bull flag in the making. And then boom, right? The price now collapsed back below resistance. So this is what, again, I call a false break. The price broke out of resistance, but shortly within a few candles, a few days, boom, right? It reverse, reverse back now to be under resistance once again. So this is a false break. And again, you can go short on the next uh, candle open or, you know, using a sell limit order if you are usually a cheap skate like me. Okay, so next candle open, you can see over here, right? You can place a, you can go short on this candle here, your stops can be above this highs, okay, and potential target could be just before this recent swing low. So i just walk you through, maybe putting some levels on the chart, right, so you can roughly see uh, what I'm looking at, okay, so let, that will be a stop loss, this can be your entry, then we'll target, we just leave it here as of now, okay, so i just, uh, I just put it to the different colours, right, so to signify stop loss, this will be signifying the entry, and then the blue will be our target, so let's see. Market then starts to hit down lower, right? Pretty good. Boom, right? Strong move down lower. Very good. Then it starts to stall. Boom, right? Collapse down even lower, right? It starts to stall with this inside bar. Then the market starts to consolidate. Maybe there's another move down lower or would it reverse against us? Whatever the case is, our stops, our targets are in place. Let's see. And now, boom, right? Notice how quickly the market has reversed against us. So here's the thing, right? Many traders at, the, at this point in time, they were panicking. Ah, Rainer, the market is against me. I'm losing my open profits. But here's the thing, right? If you think about this, if you were to exit your trade, maybe at this candle, the closing price, or this over here, you're actually cutting your loss into this area of resistance, this same area of resistance where you shorted. So for me, I'd rather the price hits my stop loss, which is at this red level over here, to prove me to invalidate my trading setup rather than exiting the trade prematurely because I see my open profits vaporize in front of my eyes. Yeah. So at this point, also another thing to note is that this swing low has been formed. So if I want to be more conservative, I could actually have two targets or just one target. I would shift my target to possibly just be below this, this swing low over here because this is where now potential buying pressure could step in and push the price higher. So if, if I'm looking to capture that one swing, I would you know possibly consider to shift my target at this, just before this swing low. Yeah. So let's see what happens. And then shortly afterwards, the market then, boom, right, would have, you know, hit your target over here. So of course, you can go with multiple target. You can have, you know, uh, first target this level, secondary target over here. So this will be T2. This is uh, the take profit first level. You can do that as well. Okay, I have one final example over here because I have another way to define confluence, right? Which again, you might not be aware of, okay? So this is the chart of uh, De Decker's Outdoor Corporation. So you can see that the concepts I'm sharing with you over here can be applied to the Forex markets, the stock, even the crypto markets as we'll walk through uh, some examples in the crypto market later on. So for this stock, right, again, uh, what's the thought process behind it, right? Where is the high probability area of reversal? So again, since the stock is in an uptrend, I'm looking for potential buying opportunities. But but where, Rainer? Where? You look at all this chart, man, Rainer. So many swing low, so many support. One, two, three, four, five. Mana, where? Which one? Yeah, <laughs> Good question. Okay, so again, uh, this is where, again, there are times, right, where if you're fortunate, you can have multiple areas of confluence coming all together at this area on the chart. When that happens, if you spot this, right, it, it, it doesn't happen often, but it does. Gosh, you know, you really, really, right, must take such a trade. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through. So another confluence factor which I want to share with you, as you know, right, is, uh, area of support is one, you know, quarterly open, yearly open. Another one is the previous year high or low. Okay, so in this case, since it's in an uptrend, you also want to consider paying attention to the previous year high. So let me just show you this. Okay, so you can see over here, there are 
two lines on the chart, a red one and this blue one. And red one, blue one. What does it mean? This tells you that this is the highest price point, right, of the previous year. So currently I'm shooting this video in uh, 2023. So previous year, the high of 2022, right, is demarked by this red bubble over here, this red dotted line. So if you look back, right, to the high of 2022, it's actually this high over here, this point, which actually translates into this red bubble, red dotted line you see over here. Now what about this blue line? Why is it blue over here? Simple, because if you look at the previous year low of 2022, is at this point, this point over here, which translates into this blue line over here. Yeah, so you do it on a year-on-year basis. That's how your levels come up. So as you can see over here, first thing first is that we have the price had a slight bounce of this previous year uh, high. Okay, so that's one. Also, as you know, as you can see by now, this is also an area of support, right? As the price has, uh, just to walk you through, previous resistance, resistance price breaks out of resistance, came back every test as support once and bounce off, came back down close, right? Pretty close to support and then had a slight rally up higher once again, okay? Now, what about our quarterly open? Let's find out. Pull it out, right? There you have it. The quarterly open is demarked by this grey dotted line over here as well. So for those of you who are, you know, not too good, right? Wearing glasses, you might have to zoom this uh, three or four times to see that grey dotted line, right? Let me see if I zoom in, will it help? Uh, well, maybe a little bit, yeah. It's okay. And what else? What else did we learn? The yearly open. Did we learn about the yearly open? Okay, let's find out. Pull out the yearly open. Wow! There we have it, right? So over here, this area around the $400 price point, plus it's a $400 price point, nice round number. This area is where you want to focus on. You have multiple things coming together. All the stars are aligned. The moon, Jupiter, Satan is all coming together in straight line. Okay? This is where you want to look for potential trading opportunities. So some of you could be more aggressive. You just place a buy limit order at that area and see whether you know, get filled. You can do that. But for me, usually I like to wait for some sort of a confirmation in the form of a bullish reversal candlestick pattern to time my entry. So let's see what happens next. So market then, you know, head down lower. We have this uh, lower close for the day. And then boom, right? This green candle, the market is now reversed above support. In fact, this is a false break because you can see over here, this low over here, took out this prior low over here, and then the next day, the candle, the market closed up higher, right? So it came down into support, and then took out the lows. Sellers tried to push the price lower, couldn't break it down lower. Instead, what happens is that the buying pressure stepped in and closed back above support. So this is a sign that, you know, sellers tried to push the price down lower, but there was not enough selling pressure to take the market lower. So what's going to happen? Well, likely it could reverse up higher. Plus, you have all these multiple uh, confluence factors coming together. So what I'm going to do is, again, uh, I'm going to enter on the next uh, candle open. Okay, boom, right? We've got a nice entry over here. Okay, so over here, I'll just put this green as our entry. Now, what about stop loss? So earlier, right, I shared with you, I usually like to set my stops a distance below the low. I, I just, you know, earlier, I just use this, use this pen and just, ah, over here. So if you want to objectively do it, right, you can use an indicator called the average true range. I'm just going to settings, just look for ATR, right, average true range. I typically have uh, 20 over here, SMA, and click OK, your shop is this red line over here. So you can see that over here, right now, the ATR value is about $11.48. Make it $11, for, yeah, 48 cents, it's fine. So what I like to do is to find out what is the extreme uh, low over here, this over this low over here, right? So this extreme low, the price is uh, 395.91. So I'll just take 395.91, 395, oops, wrong tool, 395.91. Sometimes people ask me, you know, Reno, what tool is this you're using? It's actually called Camtasia, in case you're wondering. Okay, so minus, right, 1 ATR. What is 1 ATR? Well, it's the value that's showing over here, right? This tells us that over the last 20 trading days, right, this stock, right, has moved an average of about $11.48. So on average, it moved that, that much. So I'm just going to minus 1 ATR, which is current value of 11.48. And it's going to give me, right, using my trusty calculator, right, never let me down. Okay, minus 11.48. And that gives me a value of 384.43. 384.43. So that is where my stop loss is going to be 384.43. So I'm just going to pull out this uh, tool over here, just change this to red, and the coordinates will be 384.43. Okay, there we have it. I'm just going to remove the ATR indicator so you can see better. Now, what about targets? Right? So many ways you, are, you can have a trailing stop loss to trail a stop loss as the market move up higher, you know, like using a, a moving a moving average, right? Right, 100 day moving average, etc. Or you can you know, look to capture a swing, right, where if the market Heads back up higher towards this swing high. You look to capture a swing, right? If the market can get back above this uh, swing high, just change this to to uh, blue. Okay, it's for targets, right? For those of you who want to capture a swing, I'm just going to remove the, the, the all the confluence factors so you can see better. But if you look at it in terms of a swing, right? You probably won't want to do it. So from risk to reward, you're kind of like risking this much to potentially make this much, right? 
Uh, nothing wrong with that, but you're risking a dollar to possibly make like 60 cents or 70 cents. Instead, if you go with a trailing stop loss, since you know that, hey, this trend is you know pretty nice uptrend, and trail your stop loss and try to ride the trend, that might be uh, another approach that you can consider as well. And because if you are right, right, if the trend, you know, continues up higher and you have a like uh, trailing stop loss, let's say like uh, in this case, let's go with a 100-day moving average. Since you look historically at this chart, right, the price does not break below the 100-day moving average. So that's not a bad trailing stop loss. And maybe only exit the price closes below this blue line, which is 100 day moving average right that is another option that you can consider so you can see over here right and uh, oh, still has not closed below here yeah, but i'm not going to play this forward but hopefully now you understand that the concepts i'm sharing with you how to identify high probability reversal areas using confluence factors where to enter where to set your stops where to set your targets how to even write this trend up higher right all good okay now the next secret right that i want to share with with you right is how to how to uh, they teach you how to catch explosive moves in the market before it occurs, right? Because most of the time, right, retail traders, what they'll see is that they, they let's say at this point in time, right, they look at the chart, boom, raw, Rainer, look how bullish the market is, let's buy. Usually when you see such, you know, big, huge candles that's already formed, right, printed on your charts, it's usually too late, right, because this is where the market is about to make a pullback or even a reversal, right? So as you can see over here, the price reverse. So same thing over here, right? Usually when you see a series of green candles like this over here, wow, Rainer, Lao Noah, look at this, how bullish the chart is. Usually when you see such bullish series of big green candles in a row, market is primed for a reversal or a pullback. So now the question is, how can you then capture, you know, such explosive moves in the market, right, before such a move occur? Okay, so to teach you this, right, I need to explain to you the concept of volatility. So volatility, here's the thing, right, it doesn't move, it's not static, right, the market moves from a period of, you know, low volatility to high volatility, right, and then from high volatility back to low volatility so that's the cycle over here so just to walk you through you just look at this chart over here i'm just going to zoom up a little bit you look at prior to this big up move over here what happened you can see that the market is actually in a low volatility environment over here right notice the range of the uh or rather the the price action of this chart right the market isn't really moving any where it's just kind of like chopping up and down forming a tight consolidation before it finally then you know volatility then expanded up higher okay so let's see what else so if you just look back right to all the uh, big explosive moves you have this one over here volatility getting tight and then boom market hit down lower okay let's see so let's just walk you through a few examples so you understand where i'm coming from another one over here volatility of this market getting tighter and then boom right uh volatility expanded then lower and then I'm just going to you know, eyeball this chart you know, quickly to see what sticks out to me. So again, volatility here getting tighter and then it expanded up higher. Uh, we have this over here, volatility right, shrinking and then it expanded up higher. So at this point, right, this should give you a clue right, that if you want to capture big moves before it occur, it should be during this period of low volatility environment over here and over here. This is where you want to look for an entry trigger to get in, to get on board, right? And to see, you know, if you are right, right? Volatility could expand in your favor, you know, yielding you a favorable risk to reward on the trade, you no know, risking a dollar to make $2, $3 or more, okay? So uh, this chart right now, if you look at this market, we have another potential uh, volatility contraction over here. I think that's what Mark Bin Minor Vini calls it. Some traders call it a, a build up, right? But basically the range of the candle getting nice and tight over here, okay? Great. So. Now the question is, where exactly do we look for buying opportunities? So for me, what I like to do is again, you can, uh, I like to use multiple time frames. Go down a lower time frame, like the eight hour time frame in this case, to look for potential buying opportunity. And of course, you can use the confluence factor tools that you have learned earlier to identify, you know, where's the higher probability of reversal. Okay, so I'll go down to eight hour time frame. What I'm seeing over here, right, is that there are multiple areas I can trade from. Trade from here, in here, in here, right? Let's see if any of the confluence factors right, are coming to play. So I'm just going to pull out one, right? Because I've already uh, done the quote-unquote homework beforehand, right? Before I share with you this chart. And you can see this is actually the 2023 yearly open. How this market respects the yearly open as well, okay? Uh, this yearly open is this blue line, right? Uh, you can see it's respecting this area. So of course, if I want to look for a potential trading opportunity, I want to see if the market can retest this 2023 open, which coincide with this area of support over here. So what is the setup that I'm looking for? Okay, so pretty straightforward. Okay, so now I know that this is an area of support that coincides with this 2023 open. I'm looking for the market to swing down lower, right? Take out this lows and then quickly reverse and close back up above support. It can look something like a 
hammer like this. When this happens, I'm looking to enter on the next candle open, stops a distance below this lows, possible target just before this recent swing high, right, to exit a portion of my position. So let's say I buy, for example, a thousand units of dollar against the Indian rupee, I could sell 500 units over here and have the remaining 500 units holding it to trail my stop loss, right, to see if the trend can continue higher. Because if it could, right, let's go back to the daily time frame. If it could, right, you can see that I just zoom up this market, this daily time frame is in the long term uptrend. So again, I want to trail my stop loss and see, you know, how much further of the trend that I can ride up higher. So at this point, I hope you can see how we are using multiple concepts and tools, right, to trade the markets. Okay, now I want to walk you through a, another example. So this one is the chart of uh, Ethereum, right, a cryptocurrency, right, currently right now the second uh, largest uh, market capitalization right, in the crypto world. So you can see the Ethereum, right, recently we have broke above this uh, area of resistance and the price is kind of like forming this tight consolidation over here. And I'm aware that, you know, there's another area of resistance at this highs over here. But my thought process is that, hey, you know, volatility is getting smaller. The market could possibly make another swing up higher, maybe to retest this area of resistance. Okay, so let's look for potential buying opportunity because if, let's say, I could get it near these lows of this build up over here, sell somewhere here, right? This risk to reward on this trade could possibly you not know, be risking like a dollar to make two dollars or three dollars or more. So let's see. So on the daily time frame, right, this is the build up, the tight consolidation of the uh, volatility, uh, rather the, the build up, the volatility contraction over here. So what I usually do is I go down to a lower time frame, like the four hour or eight hour time frame to look for a false break setup. So let's say you say you go down to the eight hour time frame or maybe let's say even a forward time frame. Okay, so what I'm seeing over here is that, hey, this is an area of support. So usually when you see the tight consolidation on the daily time frame, the lows of that consolidation, the lows of the build up is usually an area of support on the lower time frame. Confirm, no need to say usually, it definitely is. Okay, so again, the setup remains the same. I'm looking for a false break for the price to then you know quickly reverse back up above this area of support, close back above it and look to get long. Okay, so let's see what happens next. So this is the game plan. Okay, so in this case, you can see that market over here, this candle, right, we have this nice reversal on this candle over here. Okay, so this candle, price came down lower, took out the lows of support, and on this green candle, this to me is a decisive close back above support. So I'll look to enter on the next candle open, right, on this four hour time frame here. Stops usually a distance below the lows. I'm not going to set my stop loss for you to, to see, right, since, you know, you already know the mechanics, right, how to set the calculation and stuff like that using the ATR indicator. Okay, and target, right, target wise, my first target, right, I'll likely set it, I could, right, set it above this highs, right? If I set it above this highs, you can see that the risk to reward is not very favorable because I'm like risking a dollar to make like 50 cents, right? If I set it somewhere over here, I'll probably probably get a closer to a one-to-one. -one. So this is where active trade management comes into play. I'll see how the market reacts. If you just quickly, you know, blast through this swing high and goes to here, I'll look to take a portion of our profits, right? Uh, just before this uh, area of resistance on the forward time frame. But if it comes up here, that starts to stall and reverse, right? I will, you know, exit over here, take a portion off and have the remaining half of my position holding on to see if the market can continue to break out higher and to ride the uptrend up higher. So let's see what happens, okay? Because this is going to very closely simulate the real world of trading, okay? So in this case, you can see that market then uh, starts uh, stalling over, over here, okay? So let's see what happens. So the market then moves uh, again, a st strong wick down lower and then closing, right? Bullishly on this uh, four hour time frame. Then we have this candle over here, right? Which uh, stalled, right? So at this point, I could possibly right, take a portion of my position at this, uh, just before this swing high over here. So of course, right, the uh, risk to reward for this first half of the position won't be attractive. It's probably like risking a dollar to make like 50 cents or 60 cents. That's okay because if the market, right, that's okay. Right, reason being is that because if the market were to break above this highs over here, this area of resistance that I've just drawn over here, the risk to reward, right, could still make sense in the grand scheme of things, right, taking into account both positions. Yeah, so I'll likely take half my position off at this swing high and hold on the remaining half okay so the remaining half i'll have my trailing stop loss on so my stop loss right is going to be likely somewhere about here okay and then if the price can break above this uh, area of resistance here then i'll use the trailing stop loss right to ride the wave up higher for example could be something as simple as like the 100 period moving average you can use market structure etc there are many ways to do so and i don't believe that that's the best way so rather just a way right that suits right what you're trying to do over here that better suits your needs, right? So let's see what happens. So in this case, right, the market then you know, starts to consolidate. Then it consolidates still. And let's see. 
still undecided, right? They haven't decided to break out higher or reverse back to my entry point. Okay, and then boom, right? Finally, we have this breakout over here. So now it's breakout resistance. Resistance, I can then overlay with the, in this case, we have, let's say, the 100 period moving average. Okay, so if the price now were to close below the 100 period moving average, I will then exit the second half of my position, right? And to take whatever profits that's left. Okay, so again, using the concepts that I've shared, right? This won't, it's not a guarantee, you know, every time, you know, you'll be able to ride a trend, right? But there will be times, right, where it allows you to ride the trend and you can, you know, achieve a favorable, uh, or rather favorable risk to reward, right, on your trade in the grand scheme of things, right? So we can see over here, as the price close below the 100 period moving average, this is where you exit the trade. And this is a four hour time frame. If you go back to the daily time frame, you can see that you would have, you know, caught that big up move up higher. Okay, this, this uh, big up move up higher, the volatility expansion, and your entry price is somewhere near the lows of this build up. So can you see how powerful this is, right? Smash the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you think it is. Okay, now look at this chart over here. This is the chart of uh, Matic, one of the cryptocurrencies that is being active, actively uh, traded out there. So over here, right, at this price point, are you looking to buy or to sell at this price point? Now, I'll give you five seconds to think about this. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so if you look at this, right, many traders will look at this. Oh man, Rainer, look how bullish this candle is, right? The price has, you know, broke above resistance over here. It's up 17% for the day, right? This breakout is going to the moon, it's going to the sky, okay? Let's see what happens next. In this case, the market pretty much just reversed down lower, right? Almost... Uh, well, not as fast as it went up, but eventually, you know, it's a false breakup and the market collapsed down lower. So if this has this has happened to you many, many, many times, right? Don't worry, right? Sorry if that, you know, trigger a lot of bad memories for you because the good news is I'm going to share with you two things, right? Because if these two things are showing up on your chart, it's likely to be a false breakout, right? So this is important. <claps> Pay attention, right? And I'll share with you what these two things is right now. So going back again, right? This is the breakout point. So what are the two things that I want to look for that tells me, man, it's likely to be a false breakout? So first thing is to see, is the price against the trend? Is this against the trend? Okay, so if you look at this breakout, you can see, yes, this breakout is actually against this underlying downtrend. So that's true. Number two, is there a strong power move? What is a power move? A power move is pretty much a candle or a series of candles, right? Closing bullishly, closing strongly higher okay and sometimes people even uh, call it a short squeeze right where you know many traders are short and the market squeeze up higher make a very strong sudden pullback that's what we call a, a short squeeze as well all right but i call it a power move so it's kind of like more universal where they can suddenly spike up or spike down so if the market is against the trend and i see a power move right this tells me it's likely to be a false breakout so you can see over here market is in this downtrend over here number two we have this power move up higher right and this tells me, you know, this breakout is, isn't likely to be real, right? After all, the trend is still towards the downside. This could be a short squeeze up higher before the sellers come and step in once again to push the price lower, right? So let's see, right? So you can see in this case over here, yep, the market, right, did collapse down lower. Okay, here's another example, right? So you understand, right, what I'm saying, right? So again, if you look at this, what's the trend? You can see that at this point, market is in the downtrend. So recently, again, we have a series of candles, right? You know, breaking out higher. You can see over here, the price over here, over here, right? Have, you know, broke above this area of resistance and even this swing high. So again, traders who are not aware, they think, oh man, this is a bullish reversal. Let me go long. But bear in mind, number one, you're against this downtrend. Number two, this is what we call a power move, right? Strong, series of strong candles, you know, closing up higher. And this is, as you know, it's not really due to strong buying pressure, but more of like traders, you know, getting short squeeze, right? So many traders who are short are in profit, they take profit, it will create buying pressure and that usually, you know, uh, creates a, a big bullish candle, right? As these short traders take profit, yeah? So don't get caught, right, by these large bullish candles because if it's against the direction of the trend, chances are this is just a pullback. Right, regardless of how big this bullish candle is, right? So you can see up 7% for the day. This one here up 5% for the day. What you think about that is a lot, right? This means it's the reversal. No. Right. Because look at it from a grand scheme of things, right? Overall market is still in a downtrend, right? Then this could likely be the pullback. Okay. So since this is a strong up move up higher, what's also another significant thing about a power move is that it means that the market moved from point A to point B relatively quickly. Maybe you know two or three candles, you just boom 
go up higher. And because it moves up so quickly, right, there's actually no obstacle in the way. What do I mean by that is, let's say someone were to short at this swing high, okay, and let's say the market does go down lower, and it's starting to look for buying pressure, to look for an area of value where buyers could come in. There isn't any area of value until this swing low over here. So this means the market could just as well reverse down quickly, down lower, right, in the opposite direction. So this is why when you see that the market, or rather the, the current price action is against the trend, there's a strong power move. Bear in mind that when the pullback ends, the reversal could be just as quickly, right, towards the downside, right, resuming this downtrend as what you can see over here. Yeah, so this is the uh, two important lessons, right, or rather the, the lesson that I want you to take away from it. So if you want to avoid false breakout, always ask yourself, right, the two factors I just shared. Is this against the trend? And is there a strong power move? Because if there is a yes to both questions, chances are it's a false breakout. Okay, now let's move on and talk about how do you spot high probability breakout trades. So earlier we talked about how to avoid false breakout. Now we want to talk about how do you then spot breakouts that are likely to occur. Okay, so again, two things, right, that I want you to pay attention to. Number one, when you trade breakouts, there are two factors that will increase the odds of, you know, whether your breakout will work out or not. Number one is in the direction of the trend. So let's call it with trend. Okay, so if you're trading in the direction of the trend, that again is a plus for you. Number two, you want to look for a build up, otherwise known as a volatility contraction pattern or, you know, a term from Mark Minor Vini or you can call it a tight consolidation, you know, whatever. So let me share with you what exactly a build-up looks like. So build-up looks something like this, right? The tight consolidation on the chart. This is another tight consolidation on the chart over here. Then over here with this tight consolidation happening as well. Okay, so this is what we mean by a build-up. So at this point, right, you can see that we have a, a few, fact, two of these factors in our favor. Number one, overall trend is towards the upside. Okay, you can see that this market is in an uptrend. Number two, we have this build-up that I've just highlighted over here. Okay, not exactly the most cleanest, but you can see that the range of the candle getting nice and tight. So there are a couple of ways to play this potential breakout trade. Number one, you can have a buy stop order. Okay, so you place a buy stop order above this highs, above this swing high, maybe just a few pips above it, right? And if it's the market trades above it, you will get long. The other approach is that is you can also wait for a break and close above this resistance above this highs. If the market breaks and close above it, then you get long. So this very simple ways to uh, trade the breakout. So breakout, there's only a couple of ways to do it. You know, wait for a close or use a, a stop order. Okay, but what's important is again, the context of the breakout. You know, what is the current market structure? Is this an uptrend or downtrend? Is there a build up form prior to it? Which are the two things I've just shared with you. So in this case, you can see the market did break out higher. So if you wait for a close, you would see that you see that you would have, you know, entered at a higher price. Whereas if you, if you went with the buy stop order, you go it in at a much more favorable price. So there's no best method whether to wait for a close or a buy stop order because sometimes you can go with a buy stop order and then ends up, it's actually a reversal candle. So let's see if I can find an example. So let's say, uh, I don't really have any example over here, but sometimes what could happen is that the market goes up higher and then you eventually close down lower for the day, forming something like a shooting star pattern like this, right? So, so that could happen as well for a buy stop order. But for in this case, right, uh, the buy stop order would have been the better method, right? Okay, so just, just to share. So now, once you are entered this trade, right, where do you then set your stop loss? Again, the principle applies the same, right? You can set your stop loss a distance away from price structure. So let's say this is the uh, swing low over here. You can set it a distance 1 ATR below it, somewhere possibly around here. That would be your stop loss. And since you're now trading in the direction of the trend, you can then have a trailing stop loss, right? To ride the move up higher if the market you now continues to move in your favor. And while we are at this topic, right? I also want to share with you that, you know, you can actually use multiple time frames, right, to get an entry to go long. Let's say if you go down to the lower time frame, okay? So this one over here, it didn't give us a setup, but let's say, let me just cover this one. Okay, let's say prior to the breakout, what I will also be looking at is actually for the price to retest this level or possibly this level over here for a potential false break. So the market could possibly come down lower, get rejected. If that's the case, I would be also looking to buy, right? around this area, even though it's just in front of resistance. Because again, uh, I know I'm trading in the direction of the trend and if the market does break out of resistance, right, the trend could resume up higher and I will get a favorable risk to reward on the trade, right? So those are the two levels that I would pay attention to. So as I shared, right, this that didn't happen. The market just pretty much break out higher. So, so if you want to trade a plain vanilla breakout, 
again using a stop order or waiting for the market to close above resistance that's fair play as well Okay, here's another example over here. So I like to share a ton of examples because I find that this is how you can quickly learn, right? So if you're hardworking enough, you can you know, screenshot all these charts, right? For your own learning purposes, yeah? So again, right? How do we find high probability breakout trades? Number one, okay, you can see this market is trading in the direction of the trend, right? Overall, market is towards the upside, uptrend. Second thing we're looking for, what we're looking for? It's a build up okay so a build up let's call it bu build up okay so over here we can see a potential build up that's forming right at the highs over here this is resistance and we see a series of higher lows higher low higher low coming into resistance and on top of it we have this build up that's forming here nice and tight great so we can see that this is actually kind of like very different right from uh, what we talked about earlier on how to avoid false breakout to avoid false breakout right usually you see you know uh market is uh, against the trend you know having a power move and this is just kind of like the inverse of it okay so at this price point we have a valid entry trigger as the price has you know break and close above uh, resistance okay so this is the stock right smps so again you can look to get long your stops right can be a distance below this low so right let's say somewhere 180 atr below here possibly somewhere about here right you know how to calculate your stop loss earlier already right so i'm not going to go into it and then since the overall market is in an uptrend you can you know have a trailing stop loss right uh to trail your stop loss to trail your stop loss right and to see how much further of the trend you can capture okay now some of you might be thinking so rainer does it mean that you know to trade breakouts it always has to be in the direction of the trend right sometimes i actually see you know very profitable trading opportunities buying breakout after the market has collapsed down lower, right? So I can buy the breakout to capture the start of a new uptrend. Is that possible? Well, the answer is yes, right? But there's one other factor that you must look for, right? If you want to trade such a breakout. So to help you better understand it, right? I want you to know that the market generally move through in four phases, four stages, right? The first one is what we call, let's say, a declining stage, right? Market is pretty much in a downtrend, okay? So once the downtrend is over, it then starts to go into accumulation stage, okay? And if the price can break out of this resistance of the accumulation stage, we move on into what we call an uptrend. And then, as you know, the market doesn't go up forever. It then starts to you know, go into a distribution stage, right? And if the price breaks below this area of a support, it then goes back down lower to this uh, declining stage that we illustrated earlier. Okay, so these are generally the four stages uh, of the market. So if you want to buy a breakout, right? it means that you're trying to buy the breakout of this accumulation stage over here. So the tricky thing is you want to make sure that you're not buying the breakout when it's on the pullback, if you get what I mean. So if you recall earlier, right, the trick here is to, you know, to filter out between identifying what is a pullback and then what is an accumulation stage where if the breakout occurs, it's likely to re lead to a reversal. So the way to do it, right, to kind of like simplify your life is based on my experience, is to look for an accumulation stage of at least 80 candles, right? At least 80 candles. Okay, because if after 80 candles, right, the market does not break down low, it's probably in an accumulation stage. And if the price breaks out higher, it could lead to a reversal towards the upside. So how do you know how to calculate 80 candles. So this is the daily time frame. So 80 candles is like four months, right, of a range. So very simple, there's a tool over here on trading view. You click this ruler over here, you press the first, like the first start of the range, pull all the way to the extreme, right? You can see that the bars over here, it says 127 bars. So 127 trading days has passed. Okay, so you just see over here, 127 trading days has passed. So that meets our 80 bar requirement. So that's the first thing, right? We want to look for at least 80 candles, right? For this uh, range market. So once we have that, then the next thing we look for is again, our build up. We want to look for a tight consolidation, right? A build up is significant, right? Because it signals that the market is storing potential energy, right? Getting to make a move, right? Soon, right? So we want to see the build up, the tighter it is, the better. And over here, we have this build up that's formed over here, right? This build up. So how do we then trade the breakout? So once the context is met, once the requirement is met, again, you can go with a buy stop order or a wait for a break and close above resistance. So let's say we go with a buy stop order, this line, this green line over here. So if the market does, you know, trade above it, like in this case, boom, we can see over here, it breaks out of this, uh, this, this level, this green line, right? This is where we go long, right? On this market, okay? So we can see that overall, if I just zoom out, you can see that this is actually overall in a downtrend, but within this downtrend, we have this, accumulation stage that's being formed right and within the accumulation stage we have this build up that's formed 
as well. Okay, so that would be a valid entry trigger to go along. And by the way, this is a cherry pick chart, so you can see yeah, well, the, the move is like boom, wow, so juicy, Rainer. Yeah, so guess what? You will have, you know, uh, losers along the way. That there's no guarantee, right? But this is how you actually stack the odds in your favor to identify high probability probability breakout trades, right? Uh, especially when you are not trading in the direction of the trend, but against it. So you want to bear in mind to wait for the accumulation stage to have at least 80 candles to form within the range. Now, some of you might be wondering, but Rainer, you know, does it mean that the breakout can only work when I'm trading in the direction of the trend, right? What if, you know, I want to capture the start of a new trend reversal, right? After the market has declined, you know, maybe sometimes the start of a new trend, I want to get on board as early as possible to trade the breakout. Is that possible? Well, the answer is yes, right? But there is uh, a few other things that you would have to look for, okay? So let me explain. So yes, you can trade breakouts that is not in the direction of the trend, okay? But when you trade such breakouts, right, you, are, you want to make sure that the range of the market is at least 80 candles, or we call it the accumulation stage, right? So let me just walk you through quickly. So the market generally moves in four stages. The first stage is, a, let's say, what we call a downtrend or a declining stage. Then this over here is the accumulation stage. And if the market breaks above this resistance, we call it the uptrend, right? And then, as you know, market doesn't go up forever. So for example, for those of you who trade Forex, I'm going to walk you through an example. Let's say you're going to trade this currency pair Euro against the US dollar. You can choose right the currency pair that you're trading. Let's say your account size is in, uh, in US dollar. I think for most of you, it's in US dollar. Let's say your account is $5,000. Okay, and you want to risk 1% of your account. Just put in 1%. Or if you want to change this into a dollar term, you can put in a swap with money and you want to risk $50 that's possible as well. But I think the percentage one will be, I think, easier to understand, right? 1%, 1% of your account. So let's say your stop loss is 25 pips when trading this currency pair. Then now the question is, how many units of Euro USD should you trade such that if the trade hits your stop loss, hits your 25 pip stop loss, that is only a loss of 1% of your account. That is only a loss of $50 to your account. Just click calculate and there you have it, right? You'll speed up the numbers, which is 20,000 units or about 0.2 lots of Euro USD that you can trade. And that's the position size that you should be entering into your brokerage account, okay? That's how you calculate position size. And for those of you who trade stocks, all is not lost because there is also a stock position size calculator. Just Google stock position size calculator. This is uh, one of the first few that turn up. Let's say your account size for stock trading is $20,000 you want to risk, for example, 2% risk on the account. Let's say your entry price is uh, 20 bucks. Your stop loss is at $15. Risk to reward, let's say just put one to one. Your fees, is, let's say, let's just ignore the fees for now. Let's put zero. Slippage, just put zero, right? If you know what num those numbers are, you can put in. If not, just leave it at zero. Then just click calculate. And there you have it. It says that you can buy 80 shares, right, of this particular trade that you are taking. You can buy 80 shares of this particular stock, right, that you're trading, right? So that such that if the stock hits your stop loss, you lose, right? Uh, not more than 2% of your trading account. So in this case, it'll be about $400 on this trade. Does it make sense? As you can see, right, this is a very, very important skill set and it's not difficult to master. And once you master it, right, there's a good chance that you'll never blow up another trading account ever again. Hey, hey, what's up? What's up, right? If you have made it to the end of this video, give yourself a pat on the back because you have what it takes clearly, right? To be a good trader, right? Someone who's willing to learn, right? So I'm happy to see that you're still with me at this stage. So let's do a quick recap, shall we? Because I know I covered a lot in this, in this video with concepts that you might not have heard of before. So let's do a quick recap so the knowledge is retained in your head. First thing, we talk about how to identify high probability reversal areas. So we are using the concept of a confluence and to look for confluence on your chart, okay, you can look at things like your support resistance, just like the staple. Then you have, you know, your quarterly open, your yearly open, and even your previous year highs and lows. So if you have multiple confluence factors coming together at this area on your chart, at this support resistance on your chart, you better be sure that that is an area you want to pay close attention to, okay? Next one. How do you catch explosive moves right before it occurs? So a mistake that many traders make is that they notice the market has already break up higher, a series of big green candles in a row, and then they buy. By the time it's already too late because the market is about to make a reversal. So to catch the big move before it occurs, you have to do this, right? So number one is again, look for a tight consolidation on the higher time frame. It could be the daily time frame. 
then you look for a false break setup on the lower time frame, could be the four or eight hour time frame. So if you do this, right, if you can catch the false break on the lower time frame, then there's a good chance that if the market does break up higher, right, you are already positioned in the trade, right, getting ready to reap, right, the upside of the move. Next, how to avoid false breakout. So very simple, just these two things. If you notice that this uh, breakout is against the trend, plus there's a power move, chances are it's going to be a false breakout. Or rather, chances are, right, it's a pullback within the trend. And once the pullback is over, right, the trend is likely to resume itself. So, so be aware of this, right, so you can avoid false breakout. And then we talk about how to identify high probability breakout trades. So a couple of things. Number one, trade in the direction of the trend plus a build up. Number two, another approach is that sometimes if you are buying the breakout after the market has made a sustained move, let's say lower, right, a declining stage, the market has made a sustained move lower. And if you want to trade the breakout towards the upside, wait for the accumulation stage to form, wait for a range to form at least 80 candles. So on a daily time frame, it will be at least 80 trading days, okay? And then after which you look for a build up to form. And once there's a build up and then followed by a breakout, then you can safely, you know, enter that breakout with uh, a good chance that, hey, that breakout could be the start of a new uptrend. And finally, we talk about the one thing that all winning traders have in common is risk management and proper position sizing. Now, whatever that I've just shared with you is only the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more about technical analysis that I can talk about, but hey, you know, my voice right, is, you know, starting to get a bit rough over here, a bit thirsty already. So got to, you know, put an end to this uh, video. But if you want to learn more, then you can actually go down to my website, tradingwithrainer.com. Uh, looks something like this. And over here, right, we have a few trading guides, right, that you can get your hands on for free. So uh, I recommend getting the ultimate guide to price action trading, right, because it complements, right, what you've just learned. We talk deeper about the market structure, the four stages of the market. I'll share with you a price action trading strategy as well, so you can profit in bull and bear markets and much, much more, right? So again, uh, go down to my website, tradingwithrainer.com, okay, and grab a copy of this guide. In fact, all of these three guides are free. You can, you know, download all of them if you wish to, right? But uh, for the relevancy of today's trading, it'll be the ultimate guide to price action trading and this uh, monster guide to candlestick patterns these two guides will be very relevant right to what you've just learned earlier and in fact it will just take your technical analysis knowledge to the next level so go and download and grab a copy of this two guide it is free i'll put the link somewhere below this video so you can in fact my website my website is just here tradingfreeno.com you can just you know type in <laughs> to your phone to your, to your to your computer and just you know get these guides yeah so with that said i wish you good luck and good trading i will talk to you soon